Hi there, I'm just popping in quickly before the video starts to let you know that we're back. Yes, season two of the Measuring Up podcast starts on Monday, September the 3rd, bright and early. If you haven't listened to the podcast yet, then check out season one in the podcast player of your choice or at measuringuppodcast.com where you'll find all 10 episodes waiting just for your attention. Uh, but that's for later. Right now, you've got a video to watch. I'll see you Monday. Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and this is 10 Minute Workshop, where 10 minutes in the workshop is never enough. It's never 10 minutes, and it's never 10 minutes wasted. In the workshop this week, well, I'm making another banquet. I know, another one. It's coming up next. So you wait all year for a banquet to come along, and then two come along at once, like buses. Uh, this one's been rumbling along for a while, actually. Uh, clients have been waiting very patiently for me to finish <laughs> this other job. Big job's done. I've cleaned up a bit, at least in here. Next door's still a mess, uh, but I've got to crack, crack on uh, with the next one. Uh, another banquette, this one in birch ply. Um, uh, fairly simple, uh, smaller than the other one. It's only 2.4 meters long. Same sort of height, 420, 460 with a cushion. Uh, divided into three sections uh, with just uh, sliding doors, so no drawers in this one. I did give them the option of uh, pull out drawers. Uh, it's for a children's toys uh, in, a, in a big, lovely big kitchen. Uh, but they figured they'd be a bit heavy, to be honest. So it's just a, a, a simple box divided, uh, all in birch ply. It's up on a low plinth with some sliding doors that are going to run in a, in a track. Uh, the tricky part with this is it's going to have to be flat packed uh, because it's down in the basement and there's a big glass banister running down the stairs and it's going to be very hard to get something that size around the corner, basically. Um, so it's going to have to come apart uh, and be built on site uh, and I'm going to be using the domino connector uh, connections uh, for this. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, it's not the first time I've used the domino connectors, but uh, one of the first times. Uh, I haven't used them very often yet, so this will be the first big test for it, so we'll see how that goes. Because this job's been rumbling along for a little while, I didn't have the exact dimensions. I hadn't Double check them, I only had the very rough dimensions from when I first gave the quote. Uh, so I got the yard to cut things slightly oversized. I've gone back to the uh, on site uh, and made a visit, made a template. It's going under a stairwell, so uh, the, the stairs are sloping, so it's got to be, it's got to fit, can't be too high or too long. Um, but what's really interesting is I'm just trimming it back, and uh, my little 300 quid track saw is giving a better finish. <laughs> on the edge of the plywood than their uh, 20 grand's worth of <laughs> panel saw. I think they might need a new blade. Again, not to labour the point, but anybody who says you can do exactly the same as an MFT with just a top with rails and some bench dogs, seriously, a fence and flag stops makes a world of difference when you've got to do repetitive cuts like this. So everything's pretty much trimmed to size. Let's just go through quickly how this is going to be constructed. We've got uh, the, the bottom underneath and the top, I'll just lay these out roughly so you can see what's going on. Um, at the bottom, these side pieces, about all these sections will be screwed through from underneath. So we've got two ends. They're on the full depth. And then we've got two internal dividers. Uh, they are about here. Here. and they've been trimmed back so they fit. We've got a 6mm back going on this so that'll be rebated all the way around and in the front here is a good, we're going to have sliding doors uh, so we've got a, a channel that needs to be routed in to here and with it set back 9mm from the lip and I want it just about 3mm away from 
the dividers, so there's no chance of them catching. Uh, bizarrely, this stuff only comes in two meter lengths. You can't get it in 2.4 meter lengths. Madness. Uh, so I've got to join that, which is really annoying. Uh, also, I haven't got a cutter that's quite big enough. I don't really want to make up, end up making several passes. Uh, so I've got that coming today. Um, uh, and then, of course, I need to rebate all the way around the back, cut the back to size, and make the door. So there's still quite a lot to do in this little job. So I'm going to rebate the top and bottom and the sides of this to take the 6mm back. Uh, it's going to be rebated to 9mm, so half the thickness of the 18mm, uh, and, and uh, 6mm deep just to take the 6 uh, 6mm plywood back. Um, I'm using this guy for this. This is a Trend T11. Uh, again, in the interests of transparency, Trend have supplied me with this as a long-term test device. Uh, I've never, never really used much a trend before. I had a couple of the small routers, the T3 and the T4, uh, when I when I first started out, and they were they worked fine. Um, I've got a couple of the lock jigs and the, maybe the worktop jig and that kind of thing. But other than that, trend haven't really been on my radar. I've got to admit, uh, but they offered me one of these as a long term test uh, and gave me a few other bits and pieces uh, to play with as well. And we'll have a few of these coming through uh, in future videos. Uh, again, there's no money changing hands here. Uh, I'm not being paid for a positive review, or I, I wish, <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, I've never used a, uh, one of the big routers from Trend, this is a T11, so it's the one that's more likely to be used in a, in a bench, to be honest. Uh, I do have to rebuild my router bench later in the year, so we'll see, you know, we'll, maybe it'll end up in that, maybe it won't. But for now, I'm just going to run some simple rebates. I've got a half inch cutter in there, which is perfectly adequate to do... Uh, uh, to do this 6x9 mil rebate. I've done one test, I've tweaked things a little bit, I'll do another one now uh, and we'll see how, it, uh, see how it performs. So first test, that's all worked out pretty nicely. So the second test, I made a couple of tweaks to that. It's a nice clean cut, uh, you know, as you'd expect, to be honest, from a, a router of that price with a, a good cutter in it. The adjustments are fine. It's a little bit stiff, obviously, this is brand new. Uh, a couple of obvious points. Shouldn't be using a brand new tool, untested, on a job, fair, fair point. Uh, and also I should have moved those down on the floor because you don't really want those to risk those. Coming down on you when you're freehanding with a with a big router uh, again. I do the stupid things so that you don't have to. Uh, but it all fits very nicely. Uh, I'll get on with that. Uh, get that uh, rebate cut in the top and bottom and the sides. Uh, it does have to be stopped at the top and bottom, of course. Uh, so that'll that'll require a, a plunge and then a, and then a continue. Uh, but yeah, no problem. We'll uh, get on with that now. Turn this board over, uh, this is the base, so we've got the right edge uh, to cut the rebate in. Uh, in the interest of health and safety, I'll put a clamp on this to be sure that that won't wobble around. Uh, the only sort of fiddly bit with it really is that uh, at the ends, obviously the, the sides sit in board, uh, so you don't want the rebate going all the way to the ends because that would just look ridiculous. Uh, so we want that stopping uh, at 9 mil from the end so the rebate sort of continues around nicely. So next up with the router we've got to cut a groove in the top, a channel in the top and bottom sections uh, to take the uh, two channel nylon 
for the sliding doors. Uh, bottom channel is 9mm, top one is 12 so you can lift the doors up and they drop in, they don't come out. I've cut a test on this already uh, and the, um, uh, the channel fits in really nicely, really snugly into that. Uh, and it looks like we can do it in a single pass as well, so we'll, we'll give that a try. It's quite deep, 9mm in a single pass, but it's a beefy router and a brand new cutter and some really nice material, so I think we'll be fine. So this is why I normally do this on a table. Uh, you've got to concentrate so hard with this, look. I just missed a tiny little bit. It just moved slightly. That's all it takes. A second's lack of concentration. Now because that's on the top, uh, and it's right down low to the floor, I'll probably get away with it. I'll be able to get a little, little patch, a little fillet in there just to mask that. Uh, but yeah, you've really got to concentrate on this, you know, uh, a, a moment's hesitation or just sort of moving a cable out of the way, it's all it takes to, uh, to screw up a cut like that. Uh, and if that wasn't, if that was on the bottom, I'd have to do, the, do that whole side again. Uh, yeah, that's all it takes. However, the top channel fits in really nicely, uh, and we can't get away with it, you know, it's one of those things I'd rather not get away with something for a job like this. Uh, but I can mask that, I can hide that. Uh, so yes, uh, that's all the routing done, I think. Oh, a little, little bit to do in the doors, but I'll do that later. I think we'll start cutting some dominoes next. <laughs> 